Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with Life Coach Cindy Chavez. Today is Wednesday, March the 18th, 2020. It's 4 p.m. New York time. Wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And that is what we are really striving for over the last uh, week, 10 days or so with all of the stress related to coronaviruses and so forth. We've been making it a point, Cindy, every single day to really zero in on what feels good and help people who are followers of this whole law of attraction, conscious creation thing to stay on the side they want to stay on. And I think we've been fairly successful. Uh, this worked out pretty nicely. Yesterday, Dan Mangina and I talked about um, dealing with the stress of it because regardless of how much you work on it, I mean, we still feel the stress. Sure. All of us have a certain empathic uh, tendency. And so we pick up other people's energies. Like Linda Armstrong likes to remind me, it's a good, when you're feeling like that, it's good to remind yourself, Okay, whose energies are these? Are these yep. mine? Or are they somebody else's? Yes. Yep. So that's always a good thing, too. But uh, we're going to continue that theme today, especially since Wednesdays are Relationship Wednesdays. Right. And relationships suffer just as much as anything else. I mean, individuals suffer, oh, but relationships suffer, too. Maybe more. Maybe more, especially since right now, with all the stay in place happening, a lot of people working from home, schools yep. closed, so that kids are home. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. I saw somebody tweeting about, you know, na- about now that we all have this extra time on our hands, we can yes. learn those things that we've been putting off. You know, and I said, who are they talking to? <laughs> Certainly not wives and mothers that are entrepreneurs and also now have kids and husbands home. Like, I don't feel no like kidding. I have any more time on my hands. Right. But sure. You know, it's interesting you brought up um, empath and being, you know, an empath and having empathy. Um, this isn't an, un- this is not always a popular viewpoint because there are a lot of people out there that say, well, I am an empath. I'm an empath. Um, and I'm not saying anything about that, but just to say humans are empaths. That's right. We're all wired to be empaths. It's yes. not that you're one and I'm not, or I'm one and you're not. It's like, and if you are really, really feeling the stress because of your human ability to be empathic if the stress gets to be a lot it's usually because you have places that are unhealed Mm. it's not because you're an empath we're all empaths so it tells us once again like a mirror right like all relationships are a mirror it's telling us it's like a little check engine light telling us maybe what we need to work on in our own self to heal that and then we won't be so triggered when we start picking up other people's energies right now, everybody's triggered because this is scary. And that's one of the things that I've been talking about all day today. It feels like (laughs) is that it's really important that we are okay with our feelings. That doesn't mean we want to feel scared and triggered and fearful and full of anxiety all the time. That's not what I'm saying. But when we try to ignore that we're having those feelings, What is that? Resistance. And what do we know? What we resist persists. That's right. So something that I think is important to remember is that when we have a feeling that's always triggered by a thought, right? So we turn on the news, we hear more bad news, (laughs) (laughs) right? And we have our thought about it and we have a feeling and maybe that feeling is fear or anxiety or whatever. That feeling Uh, will naturally dissolve in less than 90 seconds, right? You know how they talk about, like, when you're trying to quit smoking. I can't remember the number. Somebody told me this. uh, My husband read me an article about it and said, that's interesting. I said, what? He said, well, they say if you're trying to quit something, like trying to quit smoking, you have an urge to have a cigarette, that that urge will go away, I think he said, in six minutes, whether you have a cigarette or not. So if you can just wait it out. Well, that feeling of fear or anxiety or whatever, it will go away in less than 90 seconds unless we add to it by telling another thought and another story. Which is exactly what we tend to do. (laughs) Right, right, right. So we see, oh, my gosh, you know, uh, New York is in stay in place mode right now. Oh, my Mm -hmm. gosh. And what do I say? Oh, my gosh, that's where my son is. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, and so then I start, start telling myself more stories and ideas that are going to keep triggering it. So here's my fix for that is that admit it and accept it. Oh, wow. That's a scary thought. I feel fear. 
and then recognize that an emotion is e motion it's energy in motion it has to move so let it move through you while you while you decide to put your focus somewhere else listen to a song go for a walk think a happy thought find an idea to do something that's not going to add to this anxiety and this is we're all having a master class in thought management right now that's right exactly right yes Right. That's precisely what's happening. And and that's the way I treat it. I treat it like, okay, this is an opportunity to, you know, test how well am I doing so far? Where yeah. where are the holes in my in my learning so far? Where have I actually, you know, sh- kind of uh set the uh, boundaries in place firmly so that I'm not being affected? Um it's also a good time. You mentioned the news. Um there there's always a a lot of interesting discussion back and forth about whether to pay attention to news. My opinion is this is one time to turn the news off. This is one time to just Yeah. Here's what I think. Here's what I think about it. It's like it's so easy, and and I'm raising my hand because I can be guilty of this too, right? It's so easy to get on the the Twitter train or the news train oh, and just absolutely. keep and just keep taking and taking in. This is what I'm telling myself now. I know where my kids are. Mm-hmm. I know where my relatives are. I know where my husband is. We're all we're all in the place we're supposed to be, and we're staying in place as much as possible. So now that we've made those choices and those decisions. Um, why do we need to listen to the news 24 seven? Yes. If you want to feel like you're, if you want to fulfill that need, you have to be informed, make a decision that you'll check the news, you know, once a day, twice a day, whatever, for a little amount of time and then let it go. Because, you know, I mean, when I was, I might have told the story before, but when I was, um, that's all right. I tell stories the same when stories I was, over uh, and over again. It's not a big deal. Believe me. <laughs> when I was applying to be accepted to uh to coaching school it was a really lengthy application and Mm. one of the questions they asked was do you watch the news so it was part a do you watch the news and part b was regardless of your answer how has this affected your life sure so my answer was do you watch the news no because at the time i really didn't do you watch the news no how has this affected your life i said i've never missed a hurricane (laughs) <laughs> like if there is something i need to know i'm gonna hear it if it's big enough that i need to know it now someone's gonna it's gonna come in somehow a right great point yeah yeah so i'm not against watching the news but i am recognizing that if be aware of what you're feeling in your body and your emotions and if it's triggering to you do something else it's a great time to read some uplifting fiction i heard that people are reading the book, uh, the plague and like, uh, you know, I saw, I saw somebody that was watching, like really watching. They kept posting what they were watching and it was like a constant stream of like zombie movies and like <laughs> the movies about like contagion and all these. I was like, no, mm. not going to do it. Like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> so, you know, I think that thought management is really the key right now. Je- Jeffrey posted something in our live stream along these lines of what to do with the news. And he, he has an interesting twist on it. He says, I started asking every day, what great news will today bring? Right. Um, I hope I don't have this wrong. I want to say it's the musician, David Bernie, maybe some created a website called things to be cheerful about or something like that. Okay. And I like signed up for it. New, you know, it's all news that's like good news. And even this week he's been sending out things and not ignoring the coronavirus situation. Like even within the situation, talking about things that bring a smile to your face, that bring hope to your heart. You know, it's like you can find it. You can find it if you have eyes to see it. You can find the treasure in any situation. It doesn't mean you have to be flipping about it or decide that, you know, you're above it all. And that's the thing I see uh, with some of the people in some of my groups is that they are very anxious, but also feeling judged for feeling anxious. Right. Mm. Um, and that's judgment, a great site though. I got to check that one out. David Bernie has that, huh? I will. Yeah. I'm going to find it and, and send it to you. Uh, okay. Or we can even post it in the comment thread for the video. Sure. But yeah. Really good stuff. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I saw a meme today that made me laugh. So I think it's good that we laugh. You were talking about Joel posting really funny things. And yep. Oh, yes. Somebody posted because so many of us now have our spouse also working from home with us. Uh, and they said, if you're new to 
you and your spouse both working at home. They said they admit they invented an imaginary coworker to just blame everything on that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. <laughs> Not that we want to get caught up in uh in the energy of blame, but I did think right. it was funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously you don't really want if you it's a good cue actually. You talked about looking for the cues. There's a cue. I mean, if you find yourself blaming the imaginary coworker then <laughs> right. Oh, wait a minute. There's something here I got to work on. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I I think it's important to recognize that um you know, there's there's different stresses that come with different situations but you have some people suddenly with their whole family home with them all day every day and that's that's becoming stressful because it's not your normal routine and then you have other people i have some clients that live by themselves and so all of their skin to skin connection is shaking hands and hugging someone's neck that they see out of their house right mm-hmm. visiting friends going to restaurants going to the office whatever they do and now none of that is happening Mm-hmm. So it's kind of two extremes. You've got the feeling very alone. Yes. And feeling isolated. Um and then the other extreme where it's like, "Oh my gosh, <laughs> everybody's home and they're all in my space." <laughs> so both of those things um can be really stressful and we all just need to recognize that you know, feelings including stress is always a result of thoughts. That's it's where true. the thought management comes in. It's like, what thought it's am true. I having that's creating this feeling, right? So I was teaching a, a group today that being honest and telling the truth is one of the best things you can do for your immune system. Hmm, good point. Because when you're, you know, and I said this to my group, it's not like I think my group's full of liars, right? No, right. <laughs> so when I say that, okay, sorry to tell y'all, I'm going to have to stop all the lying because it's not good. For you. <laughs> I don't mean it that way, but I'm talking about, especially in law of attraction circles, sometimes we want to fake it till we make it. Mm-hmm. Sure. So sometimes somebody says, how are you doing? We go, I'm good. And we're not really good, but we're, I'm good, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're living at home and you're having to invent imaginary people to blame things on because things are stressful, I'm just telling the truth. And one of the ways you can tell the truth without causing conflict is to keep it about you. So what I was telling this, my other group is that um, I'm sure my husband has heard me in the last week. I, I think I'm one of the most positive people you know in his life but i know he's heard me say i'm feeling worried Mm -hmm. i'm feeling scared not i am worried or i am scared because we are all so much bigger than fear or anxiety or any other emotion that we could have right good point too but we feel we still feel those things and so on top of that 90 second rule of letting it pass you can admit it accept it feel it's flowing through your body and then a mantra is really great. Some kind of mantra. Mm-hmm. So I'm a big Star Wars fan. So I'm one <laughs> with the force and the force is with me. Oh, nice. I like that. Okay. Um, every moment is perfect is another one of mine. And it doesn't matter <laughs> if that moment is a moment that's hurting like hell or feeling uncomfortable mm-hmm. or full of grief and loss. It's still a perfect moment. Yeah, that's true. And we can go with um, all is well and all manner of things will be well. Right. So it's like we feel the fear. We say, oh, that's a scary thought. Everything's going to be OK. I am one with the force and the force is with me. Mm-hmm. And we drop mm-hmm. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it almost doesn't even matter what I mean. Those are some pretty cool ones. I like those. But it almost doesn't matter what the phrase is, because no. the purpose of the phrase is simply to kind of break the flow of whatever that negative thing is and yes. give yourself a chance to move in a different direction. Just kind of shift direction a little bit. It's a pattern interrupt. Right. Because otherwise you go, oh, my gosh, what's going to happen to my kid who's over here? And that reminded me that my uncle lives alone and he's over there. And pretty soon we're just on a train of thoughts that is causing stress and anxiety in the body. And stress and anxiety in the body is not good for our immune system. Interesting thing, too. Um, We are, of course, approaching spring. And here in the Northeast, that means that more and more people are getting out. Uh, because we're, we're leaving behind our, oh, our, our it's not so cold, right? It's not so cold, right? Uh, and 
not everybody is willing to do it. I mean, there are some people who are kind of germaphobic. And so, like, for instance, one of my wife's friends, uh, she talked to her by phone. She's pretty germaphobic. And she and her friend decided to take a walk. But they did it by walking on opposite sides of the street. I saw, you know, that famous picture of the Abbey Road album where the Beatles yes. are walking? I saw somebody right. post one, but in the it said the New World. And they were like, <laughs> Six feet apart from each other. I, oh, that's so funny. Well, I have to say, that's another thing that I've been so thankful for is that this is not airborne. That's right. So we do need to avoid direct contact with people touching, shaking hands, hugging. Well, and all well that. we should qualify that. It, it's not airborne as long as you're not being hit by moisture with, from somebody sneezing or something. Correct. You don't want someone sneezing in your face. But right. what I mean is that we don't have to worry that we're going to go outside on a beautiful day, and exactly. if we breathe in the air, providing we're not breathing in a sneeze or cough from someone, yes, correct. Right. <laughs> That's good. Um, but I've been so happy that we can go out and take a walk. Yes. Um, because that will, you know, when we start feeling anxious or feeling stuck, one of the things that dissolves inertia is action. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, it literally, I mean, moving your body. So being able to say, I'm going to go out and take a walk um, is a is a great thing. I know maybe not all of us can do it, but here in my neighborhood, there's plenty of places to walk and there's no one out there. So that's And I think, I think people are kind of either consciously or subconsciously, they're recognizing that taking the walk and seeing other people and greeting people is like a a way of replacing the other ways that we dealt with people. Uh, Because if you're not in large groups and you're not shaking hands and so forth, well, you can still greet somebody. And so, I mean, normally I, I, I like to kind of, you know, keep track of who's greeting who as I do my walks, right? Uh, and, you know, typically on any given day, I, I've gotten to the point now where, where I guess people know me well enough and I put off a good enough vibe that I get, you know, a fair number of people saying hello and so forth. Um, today, Louise and I took a little walk together. Everybody was saying hello enthusiastically. Ah. And that was the interesting part that, wow, it's, it, it's almost like they're consciously or subconsciously finding a way to replace that other thing that's missing for the moment. You know, I, I was in a meeting with some other coaches today, and one of, my, one of my coach friends was talking about that trauma and coaching people with trauma has always been her, her wheelhouse, right? Mm-hmm. But she said, but I've never been in this situation where every single person was going through the same trauma. Me included, right? It's pretty so unusual. Everyone's experiencing mm-hmm. the same thing. And I mentioned that having gone through some hurricanes, um, Hurricane Katrina, mm-hmm. um, Hurricane Gustav, this, this feels like that to me because that's a familiar kind of traumatic situation. Yep. So it's like, I keep thinking, you know, we're stocking up a little bit on stuff to stay in. And then I think, Oh, wait a minute. I don't need to buy this stuff. We're not worried the power is going to go out, right? Because that's a hurricane thing. This is not a hurricane thing. But what I recognize from what you just said is that during a hurricane, when you're out, everybody seems more connected. Everybody talks more. No, no one just is standing in line at the store not saying anything. Everybody's trying to connect. And I think that's part of our kind of tribal a way of feeling like we're all going to be okay is to mm-hmm. is to connect that way. And so I saw somebody else say the same thing. They said they went to get takeout in a restaurant that was only doing takeout, standing in line, and that they've done it many, many times, and no one's ever talking. And this time that everybody was greeting them and was so enthusiastic and talking. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, yeah, it's the same thing. I hadn't thought about it till you mentioned it, but I, like I think it's almost it. innate. I don't think most people are doing it consciously. I think they're just doing it because they need to, and just, it just kind of comes out, so to speak. Maybe. We do. Yeah. We need each other. We're all in this together. <laughs> yes, that's true. It's very true. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we've kind of outlined uh, both some of the challenges and some of the benefits, if you will, of dealing with the situation. Let's go back to the challenges for a moment, because like you said, when when families are packed into a house in a way that they're not – normally used to being packed together because they usually have other things going on in their days. That's when family tensions of various kinds can kind of come to the surface, Mm -hmm. kind of like an extended Thanksgiving. It it does. It's a Thanksgiving that keeps on giving. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Let's talk about some strategies for dealing with that because, you know, it's, 
it's almost kind of like you're stuck there for a bit. Well, I think that the most important strategy is to to tell the truth, like I was talking about before. And because so many times people don't tell the truth about how they're feeling and what they need, just those two things. And so what happens is they start to become resentful. So in their mind, they're, they're thinking all of these thoughts about everyone's in my space and everyone's expecting me to do this or that. And I don't have, you know, but they're not saying it. Mm-hmm. So just to say, and keeping it about yourself, I really, I really need whatever it is. Maybe it's that you just need 10 minutes by yourself. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's that you need quiet to get whatever it is, right? And then, you know, there are, there are what I call the four magic words. <laughs> Would you be willing? Uh-huh. <laughs> right? So it's like, I really, I really feel crowded and like I need some space to myself and some time to myself. Um, would you be willing to let me have this room over here by myself for 10 minutes? Would you be willing, you know, it's just letting, sometimes you don't even have to say that just saying, I really feel stressed and like 10 minutes alone would help me often. Everyone will offer, Oh my gosh. Okay. Mm, Sure. So it's, it's telling the truth about it's recognizing that we're all responsible to get our own needs met. It's not other people's responsibility to meet our needs. And then, Mm -hmm being willing to say how we feel and what we need and being willing to take responsibility for how we're feeling. Right. Um, and just make the choice that we're not going to blame everyone else. <laughs> it's really easier said than done. Right. When you're in that. Well, Ooh. yeah. When you're saying that I'm, I'm thinking of one particular kind of situation. I, I haven't experienced it a lot in my life, but I did experience it with one, actually an ex friend. Uh, and I know other people have experienced this kind of thing. We all know that there are many people in life who have um, fairly serious issues. Let's put it that way. They, you know, certain things they haven't really learned about themselves. They, certain things that their own mirrors they're just kind of ignoring and so forth. Um, the one particular situation I'm remembering was with this ex-friend who really had no clear understanding about how to deal with his own anger. So he dealt with anger by basically dumping it on everybody else. Mm -hmm. That can be pretty toxic when you're kind of forced into an enclosed space. And there are probably people who who deal with that kind of thing, who have those, they, they, they just know, Oh yeah, you know, uncle Tom, you gotta be careful about uncle Tom, you know, that's, that's a, how do you deal with those? Well, it's always a boundary issue. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Because so many times we tolerate things and, for, for, for the best of reasons, right? We may tolerate something from a family member that we'd never tolerate from a random neighbor or something, but it's like, mm-hmm. but this is our family. Or sometimes we tolerate things and we don't speak up about the way things are because we think we're keeping the peace. Mm-hmm. Yep. We think that if we tell the truth uh, in some way that we'll cause more conflict. That's usually not the case. When you, Keep quiet to avoid conflict. There's still conflict. It's just inner conflict. Mm -hmm. It's conflict within you. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So I think I still think that's always the best way is is to be honest about how you're feeling and what you need. And making a specific request is really important. Um, And that's why I went with that. Like, I, I really feel like I need some quiet time. And I'm going to request, I, I, need, I just want 10 minutes right now to go meditate or something, you know, I'm just making things up. But I mean, instead of, I just meet, need more time by myself. That's just so vague. Mm-hmm. No one knows how to meet your need that way. Nobody knows how to help, right? It's like the one spouse saying to the other, you know, nobody's saying it this week, but just saying, you know, you, ne- you don't spend enough time with me. I want you to spend more time with me. Spouses go, okay, instead of saying, I would love it if we could eat dinner at least four nights a week together. Mm-hmm. That's specific. It is specific. Right? Yeah. So the more specific we can get, it, it actually helps people love you better when they know what you need specifically. Well, essentially <laughs> what you're doing in those more specific situations is you've come up with 
an example idea of what to do instead of expecting the other person to come up with yes. the idea. And it's so hard for some people. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. It's a thing I do with, with clients is coach them through figuring out a specific thing. And sometimes they're like, well, I don't know. And I said, well, then how are they supposed to know? If you That's don't it. even know, and it's your need, if you can't put it into words, why are you expecting them to be able to just figure it out, right? So learning what we need and learning how to get those needs met and learning how to ask for what we need, all super important. And they're skills that everybody's going to be, you know, it's going to benefit you right now with all <laughs> of us stuck together in in uh, close quarters. So super important. Now, as far as somebody like you said, the toxic person that, full of anger and doesn't know, you know, dumps it on everybody. Uh, sometimes you just have to say, you, you know, I love this idea. At its very basic level, a boundary, people get all weird about boundaries. Like they don't know how to set boundaries. We don't get taught this, right? Um, but a boundary is just letting somebody know what's okay and what's not okay. So it would be just saying, it's not okay for you to be saying these things around me or to me or whatever. It's just not okay. I understand that you're angry. See, we can have some empathy. I understand that you're angry. You seem angry. I understand that you're angry, but it's not okay for you to talk to me this way or whatever. And by the way, it's actually more powerful to do that in a group than individually because it's much harder for the person who's the anger disperser <laughs> to, to disperse their anger because now they have to do it in front of everybody else. And now, now they're setting themselves up a little bit. <laughs> Well, that may be true. It may not always be the case that you have a group around you, but. Well, I'm thinking true. in this yeah. case, if, if you, if you're living at home and you've got a bunch of people all at home that weren't used to always being at home, well, you, you always have a captive audience right there. True. true. <laughs> so it's an opportunity to take yeah. advantage of that. You know, so okay. it's definitely, it's, it's like I said, it's a, it's a masterclass in communications, in relationships, in thought management. We're all getting that opportunity right now to become masters at all of this stuff. And that's the way I look at it. I look at it as I said it yesterday is I, it's like going to the, to the mental gym and working out, yeah. you know, right. it's, it, yeah. okay. I know this stuff. I've been talking about it on the podcast for years now. I've been talking with some people who really know it really well. Our listeners have, have really become expert on it. Okay. Time for the rubber to meet the road. Let's practice. <laughs> <Right. laughs> we, we say, we say this all the time. It doesn't work in theory. It works in practice. That's so right. Not all the theory. Now it's time to we get the opportunity to put it into practice. That's and, right. And, you know, here's the thing. Everyone is going to suffer losses. Like, I mean, there's not going to be too many people that don't have, that aren't personally affected in some way, a relative, a friend, someone they know. Um, we've already experienced it in our family. So um, we need to be ready to be very kind to each other and very kind to ourselves when we're experiencing grief and loss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is, you don't beat yourself up. You don't think that you're not spiritual enough or you haven't, you're not doing this stuff right because something bad happened in, in your circle. No, it happened because you're human and humanity right now is going through a crisis. So it doesn't mean that you can't manage your thoughts. It doesn't mean that, you know, managing those thoughts won't help your immune system. But this is a un very uncertain time. And so, you know, when we go through times that feel uncertain, uh, we have to be careful to be gentle with each other and with ourselves. Yeah, the gentleness is really important, particularly, I think, with ourselves. Certainly, we want to be gentle with others. But my impression Certainly in my own experience, and I think it's probably true of most people, we're harshest on ourselves. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, I mean, really, really harsh at times. So yes. that that's where it's most important to be gentle. Not just in this kind of circumstance, in any circumstance, but this is where it really becomes super helpful. Right. Yeah. You know? No, you're right. I mean, <laughs> there was a saying, it was actually in, in my curriculum when I was in, in school. It said, um, I'm trying to remember, it said, if we treated our friends the way we treat ourselves, we'd all be in jail. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Something like that. Right? It's just like we're so hard on ourselves. We're mean to ourselves sometimes. So this is the opportunity to, mm -hmm. you know, to be kind. It's also an opportunity to kind of practice the, I'll call it the positive side of being a conscious creator. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
anybody can focus on what they like and what they want when they're feeling good. The challenge is, can you find what you like and what you want when you're feeling lousy? And not only that is how, what good can you find in the situation itself? Yeah, that's part of it. Sure. Like, you know, there, there is good that is going to come out of this. Mm -hmm. And can you see it? And can you train yourself to see it on a day to day basis? That's right. Yeah. Right. Because what we focus on expands. Mm -hmm. It's not what, it's not, you know, it's what we focus on. It's, it's not what we, uh, it's not the stories that we just make up. We can find it without having to lie to ourselves. It's out there. <laughs> right? That's true. It, it doesn't have to be a falsity. The, the central nervous system is very, very weighed down when we, when we don't tell the truth. So if you want your immune system to function well and you want to have power, just tell, be honest and tell the truth. Now, that doesn't mean that, that you know, some people are unkind and they say, well, I just call it like I see it. I'm a truth teller. <laughs> and they don't mind telling you, wow, that's the, that's like the ugliest purse I have ever seen. Why would you wear that purse? Right. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being honest to yourself about what you're feeling and being honest about, you know, relationship stuff instead of covering it up. I'll tell you a funny story. <laughs> okay. I do a thing on Facebook on Tuesdays where uh, I do a little tarot reading and it's, I make those posts public. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody sent me a message and they were someone that I've been friends with on Facebook for years, years and years. Hadn't seen them much around much, you know, um, haven't connected with them much lately, but they sent me a message and said, I'm trying to comment on your post, but it won't let me, it will only let me share or like, but it won't let me comment. Uh -huh. And I was like, Hmm. So I went and looked at my settings and I had my, I guess the setting on the post was that if they weren't friends, they could still like it or share it, but they couldn't comment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I went to their page and it had the option for me to add them as a friend. And they said, and I said, oh, that's, I said, well, it looks like we're not friends on Facebook. And I, <laughs> and I just decided to tell the truth. And I said, mm -hmm. so you must have unfriended me at some point because I've never unfriended anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and they actually said, lol, okay. And then they sent me a friend request and I accepted it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, there was a little bit of hesitation or at one point there would have been that if I say this, the person will get upset. But I just said it because it was true, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't unfriend them. I've never unfriended anyone on Facebook. So I was like, well, <laughs> I guess you unfriended me at some point. They said, okay. <laughs> now we're friends again. <laughs> interesting interesting thing, too, because there, I have unfriended people on Facebook, but I don't do it anymore uh, because what what I do instead is I simply unfollow. I didn't I, At the time that I was unfriended, I didn't know that was available. You have, yeah. You used to not have that option. Right. Yeah. yeah. But since that option came along and I became aware of it, I figured, well, shoot, this is great. I love this. <laughs> right. If you don't want to see certain things, then you don't have to. Yeah, right. that's right. And with, with everyone having hundreds of Facebook friends now, I mean, it seems like it. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so much that can be in your feed. And so this is the same thing like the news. Yes, right? very much. Even more so, I would say. Because I'll, I'll, I'll tell you honestly, as as bad as the news can be for you psychologically, I really do believe that some of the commentary I see on social media can be worse. Oh, some of it is really bad. Yeah. 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 Some of the comments are terrible. <laughs> I mean, there, there are people who are, and this is this is kind of like a, an extension of what we've been talking about where this whole crisis situation has been concerned, that the repeated focus. Okay. I'm, I'm focusing on this thing. I don't like, and now I'm going to focus on it some more. Now I'm going to focus on it some more. There are people who are just posting one thing after another, you know, right. trying to guilt people, trying to push them in their, in the direction they think they should be going and so forth. All about the virus, the virus, the virus, the virus. I'm thinking, Oh my goodness. And I know some of them actually understand law of attraction. <laughs> well, I think, you know, it's, it's also connected to fear and anxiety it and is. people worried Absolutely. that other people aren't taking it seriously. And I have to say, you know, at the, at the point where in our city, um, it, the schools were closed, everything was closing. And uh, we went for a walk 
And, you know, my, my sister is a, a, a nurse, a trauma nurse, the kind of nurse that she, she actually flies a helicopter and mm-hmm. goes to Haiti when there's an earthquake and, you know, mm-hmm. just major. Right. Right. And so this is kind of, you know, her thing. Um, and she posted an article that was interesting because I don't have kids see. So, I mean, I do, but they're grown, they're in their own places. So I'm not dealing with third graders at home or whatever. Right. But the article was called, this is not a snow day. And what it was talking about was that so many people are like, Oh, the schools are closed. Let's have a big neighborhood sleepover and let's all visit each other. So we are not bored. And, you know, and there's that, that was a, not the whole point of this, right? <laughs> so we were walking and there was a group of maybe 20 uh, tween age boys and parents playing with a big ball all thrown it around. It's <laughs> just like, eh. so I understand that need to like, oh my gosh, people aren't getting this yet. We have to talk about it. Um, but it's, it's still on, it's still your own responsibility, what you see in your feed on social media, how much news you watch, how much, you know, and you can, it's like boundary setting. You can turn that off. And, and I'll even go out on a limb here and say, it's not your responsibility to get other people to take the virus seriously. It, it's not your job. Your job is to do what you need to do with you and, and the people you care most about. It, it's not your job to fix the world. The, the world is not here for us to fix. And that, that's a hard concept, especially in the middle of something like this. But really, it's not our job to fix the world. Well, as a Jewish person that believes in a concept called tikkun olam, which means repair of the world, um, I believe it is our job to fix it. Um, I believe it is our job to do what we can to make the world a better place. That's why I'm in the business that I'm in. I mean, that's let, what let I me, do. Let me clarify my, my point, because I really do believe that it's not our job. But the reason it's not our job is that the world isn't broken. I, I truly do believe that the world is not a broken place. The world is functioning the way the world needs to function. It is It is doing its job the way it needs to do its job at all times. And that's the difference between seeing the world as whole and and healthy and seeing the world as sick and broken and and in dire need of everything it's basically a very very needy needy place i think the it's earth much more is important. not the earth is not in trouble no <laughs> but the oh we just lost voice from it <laughs> so is my microphone okay you, you were fine up to, up until that point and then all of a sudden for about 3 seconds we lost you so, i don't know i don't know so I'm curious about, uh, I can't ever see the chat because I'm not over there. So I'm curious about comments and questions. Jeffrey and- has been like fluent as he often is, but today yeah? he's really, I mean, it's like one thing after another about what he's been <laughs> doing. Uh, he says, uh, let's see, I've been helping a lot of people work through their anxiety and fear. He says, talking to a counselor helps. I have faith in love and connectedness and yes. it's, Response to something we said, yes, intelligence and appreciating, turning on music and dance, universal kindness is raising our global vibration, spatial solidarity has replaced social distancing. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll tell a funny story that I saw in a moment. Those of us that have known our empathic nature for a while have developed discernment. Uh, wow. Again, counselors are available for grief and loss, and then self-care, take baths, cry, Eat chocolate, hug trees, plant flowers. So, I mean, just like this. Hey, I love that. Stuff. Hug trees because hug if trees. you can't hug each other, there's trees everywhere. That's you right. Trees. Yes, yes, yes. Self care. Oh my gosh. And one of, I think an important part of self care is visualizing a better future, right? Mm-hmm. Imagining what feels better. Definitely. Yeah. So tell us your funny story. Oh, this is something that uh, one of the, the better things that was posted on Facebook, and I don't remember who posted it. It was somebody who was posting from a, an LOA perspective, but somebody had found a picture, a really old picture from like, I don't know, 1930s or something like that, of women in these huge hoop dresses. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and it was labeled the, the replacement for social distancing because that nobody could I, get close to each other. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm ready to do it. Yes. <laughs> Giant Cinderella skirt. That's it's right. Everyone six feet away from me. It's so huge. <laughs> great that idea. was great. great <laughs> no, I think that, I think that's so important to remember. I'm glad that Jeffrey brought it up talking about relationships and 
being in close quarters, being so cozy as we are right now, and how that can cause stress, um, self-care is super important. And you are responsible for your own self-care. That's right? right. No one else is responsible for taking care of me like I can be. I know what I need. I know what's going on in my inner being. So self-care on lots of different levels, like drinking enough water, getting enough sleep. Like right now, I, I've heard several people say that they are, are not sleeping well. Mm. Um, I know I had a couple of nights. Um, what's today? Wednesday. Sunday and Monday just did not sleep. And last night I slept great or Saturday and Sunday, but Monday and Tuesday I slept really well. And it makes so much of a difference to sleep well. So good sleep hygiene. And then that, that's another thing. Stop looking at the news before you go to bed, you know, <sighs> especially. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to allow yourself some news time, do it early in the day. So you've got plenty of time to wash it away <laughs> and get it out that's of your psyche. I, I mean, and I've made the mistake of like waking up at 4 a.m. and feeling wakeful and not being able to sleep and then opening my phone and looking at the news and then being like, why did I do that? Because, because <laughs> <laughs> then I'm probably not going to go back to sleep. So yeah, just recognizing that self care and good uh, relationship habits, most of them are pretty easy. If we'll just do them. I'll, I'll tell you another little funny thing. Um, you know that from conversations we've had, particularly after shows, that I have been working for many years on kind of divesting myself from my past attachments to the world of politics. Yes. And I, I've made a lot of progress in that direction. Um, I still pay a little bit of attention, probably because I was a political scientist in school and, you know, you kind of want to use your degree right. for something if you, you know, if you got <laughs> it. You know, so, I mean, I, I like to use it and it, it's part of my way of, of kind of letting go of all that kind of thing. Well, an interesting thing happened during this crisis. While this crisis was going on, if I need to, to, to kind of divert my attention, I go look at politics and you know what? Politics was mild by comparison. <laughs> it was actually an improvement. <laughs> which was right. not what I expected, but it actually felt better. And <laughs> How I things that, change. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. And I say that with some humor, but there's actually a, a point I'm trying to make. It isn't about trying to be happiest at all times. It's about trying to find something that feels better. If, yes. if it just feels yes. a, a somewhat better, it's an improvement. And that's what we're really looking for, especially when we're dealing with this craziness that we're dealing with. Anything that's an improvement is an improvement. Yes. And that's why, you know, recognizing and even naming the, the emotion that you feel. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then turning your focus inward to what your body is feeling. And I mean that literally, like feelings and emotions are two different things. We, we sometimes call them all feelings, but if I feel worried or if my emotion is that I feel worried, I might have a physical sensation of, I don't know, my my shoulders are tight or I have a headache or I have a knot in my stomach. So that's the feeling. So if we recognize how we feel, picture it moving through our body, mm -hmm. use a mantra that feels good, or maybe that makes you laugh, right? Yes. Oh, boy. This too shall pass, right? <laughs> well, maybe something that, that brings a smile to your face. You'll notice that progression and it's definitely a better feeling thought. Mm -hmm. You know, if I say, uh, every moment is perfect. That's a much better feeling thought than we're all going to die, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. those are two extremes. But, I mean, to me, that's you're right about that. Nobody is going to be exceedingly happy every single day, every single moment, even in more normal times. Mm -hmm. Right now, yeah, nobody should be shooting for that. But what you should be shooting is for is being aware of how you're feeling and then what feels a little better. That's it. It's really pretty simple if we would just do it. And it's also kind of cool too, because if you can find that one thing that feels a little bit better and then you can stay in that new place a little bit, then you can go for something that feels a little bit better. So you may not be able to live at the high vibration level right now, but you can walk there. You can get there. Well, one step and at somebody time. said, somebody said to me after I did a short live stream with some of these tips and somebody said, well, I feel a little better now. And yeah. then they said, but I still feel worried. And, and I said, thought management never stops. That's right. 
But what will happen is there'll be a larger gap in between from one event to the next. Right. And that's what we're going for. Instead of that constant anxiety where every thought we have is something worrisome, we can stretch that a little bit and make that gap a little wider. And like you said, we go from a, a thought that really feels uncomfortable to one that feels a little better. If we can stay there a while, the next better feeling thought, we keep climbing. That's right. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah, there will be something that comes along in your life. It is inevitable that will bring you back down. It happens. You do sure. it again. Then you do it again. Yeah. It's like that idea in meditation when people say, I tried to meditate and I just couldn't do it. My mind kept wandering and I kept trying to bring myself back, focus on my breath. And then my mind would wander and I have to bring myself back again. And I go, you're doing it. <laughs> That's, That's right. It. <laughs> that, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not a monk. Most of you aren't. <laughs> I'm not. Interesting so, thing too happens that, and, and this is why I was uh, kind of going on earlier about how valuable it is to use these situations as opportunities to kind of work the muscles a bit, to work the mental muscles, is that when you're doing this on a regular basis and using this kind of a situation as an opportunity to kind of really push it a little bit, you're making yourself stronger mentally. Yeah. You're making yourself yes. able to focus on that stuff that you like more easily so that it's kind of like what a baseball player does when he goes up to bat. A baseball player, when he's in the on deck circle, will put an extra piece of metal on his bat and swing the bat with the metal because it's harder to swing. Mm-hmm. And then he'll get up to the plate without the metal and all of a sudden the bat feels real light. He's like, okay, I'm ready to go here. <laughs> it's the same psychology. When my son, my, I, my youngest son was a professional cyclist for a while and uh, when he started, you know, there's a saying with bicycles. Um, it's strong, cheap, light, pick two. Mm-hmm. Right? Because yep. if it's light and cheap, it's not going to be very strong. And if it's strong and cheap, it's not going to be very light. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's true. Right? Because those carbon fiber bikes that weigh nothing, they're very expensive. They are. Well, he did not have a very expensive bike when he started. And so he was training on a bike that was like much heavier than everybody else out there. Right. Mm-hmm. So when it came time where he did have the good bike, man, he was like a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> and so there was this one company and I don't remember who they are now. Uh, one of the bicycle companies and for April fools, they made an ad and it was like the wheels on the bike were made out of concrete. <laughs> and it was like they were. Pitching it is this great training bike because it weighed like 80 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Hysterically funny. But you're right. Yeah. That the more we use it, the more, the easier it gets. And the it does stronger get easier. we get. And that's why it's so important to just keep going. Don't beat yourself up. Be kind to yourself, especially right now. But just keep doing it. And it's cool because the more that we do that, the more that our muscles, so to speak, get stronger. It's amazing how life gets better because now it becomes, e- we talk about wanting it to be easy, how, how the whole law of attraction process is, is an easy process. Well, that's when it becomes easy because now the, the effort that you had to go through back when you were first trying to do it isn't there anymore. You've built right. your, your emotional and mental muscles up. Right. So Dang. bicycling is set for anybody that's ridden a bike. Uh, bicycling is such a great metaphor for it right it really is when you first start riding a bike like my house is at the top of a hill (laughs) when i first started riding a road bike i mean to get home i had to go up that hill which meant that hill was always at the end of my ride so i would go out ride 10 or 20 miles and then have to come home and it almost killed me at the beginning it was so hard to get up the hill but then Mm. as time went on it wasn't as hard to get up the hill that's That's what we're talking about and if i would have quit uh before I ever got up the hill. So that's what we don't want to do. We don't want to quit. We want to keep going. That's right. Yeah. And just because something feels uncomfortable, it doesn't mean you've failed. It doesn't mean no. you're not doing this right. It just look at it as another opportunity to manage your thoughts. It's always connected to some thought. And we're all responsible for our own thoughts. And thank goodness We all have the power to change our thoughts. Mm -hmm. We have that power and that will change your feelings. Your feelings will change your behavior and everything changes after that. You'll have different results. You'll feel differently. 
It's all thought management at this point. Isn't that the the, the truth? It, I mean, it's true for anything when we're dealing with anything in life, but when we're dealing with something like what's going on now, it's everything becomes heightened. You know, our emotions become heightened. The tendency sure. to go into that negative vortex particularly becomes heightened. Um, but also it works the other direction too. If you're in the midst of that, you know, that tendency toward a negative vortex, that toward a negative downspin, and you work the muscles and you turn it around, and you start feeling good. I mean, right now I'm feeling pretty good. We're telling some funny stories, you know, we're sharing some interesting stuff and so forth. I'm feeling pretty good. You can actually feel good and stay feeling good for quite some time in the midst of struggle, in the midst of difficult situations. You can. And when you notice that, to me, that's the most important part. Mm -hmm. Yes, you've done all this work. I've done all this work. I've gotten to this place. I'm feeling better. But the best part is I'm noticing that I'm feeling better and I'm celebrating it. Like, oh my God, I'm doing it. I'm feeling better in That's the it. midst of insanity. I'm feeling good. <laughs> yeah. It feels so weird. Look at those other people. They're all so miserable, but I'm not. I'm feeling great. That is such an interesting feeling. Well, so much of it is attached to that primal brain and adrenaline, right? Where everybody's like in fight or flight mode. Mm -hmm. And how do we stop that Be we by telling a different story, having a different thought? Absolutely yeah. true. And yeah. it doesn't mean you're lying to yourself. I'm not talking about convincing yourself that nothing's really going on or convincing yourself that we're not really. That's not that's not what we mean at all. But it's just having faith in yourself that you have control over your thoughts and not other people and not the news and not your own brain that wants to spin out and tell a bunch of stories um, that aren't really real. That's the thing is there are real things going on. And then our brain likes to sort of one up it and give us more stories that match That's right. <laughs> that might not be going on. Right. There's like the thing we fear the most. Like, so we, we start developing and this could happen and this could happen. And it's kind of like they say that when you watch a movie, um, the reason why you have a strong, emotional reaction, you know, to like a scary movie or a sad movie is that, I mean, we know this stuff isn't real. Mm -hmm. Like we watch a movie and we're a tearjerker. Let's say we watch it and we're just like, Oh my gosh, this is so terrible. <laughs> and we know it's not real. We know it's a made up story. Mm -hmm. We know it's just actors. We know that, you know, the blood is fake, whatever. <laughs> um, and, but it's because our body, that our, our logical mind knows the difference and says, oh, those are just actors. That's not a real explosion, you know, whatever. But our body doesn't know the difference, and it produces all the same chemicals that it would be producing if we were actually watching a real live whatever happen. And, and that's what happens when we hear news that's actually going on, and then we start telling stories or worrying about extrapolating out into the future what, what it could mean. Mm -hmm. It's important that we can do that for our survival, right? The scientists and, and people studying things need to be able to draw a conclusion based on facts. Yes. But most of the time in our mind, in our own story, we're drawing some conclusion that's not based on a fact. It's based on some story that we've invented. And so that's the thought management we're talking about. Absolutely true. Right. Yeah. And in fact, uh, we, we've, for the last few minutes, we were talking about what is often experienced when we do the work and we get ourselves into that better feeling place, despite the odds, so to speak, despite the stuff that we're, we're dealing with, um, how good it can feel. It's also kind of fun to notice that the, that the manifestations, the, the coincidences, they start to happen again. I, and we just had an yeah. example of it in the, um, in the, uh, live stream, Josephine posted what a coincidence, how yesterday Dan and I at one point were talking about Merlin and a particular, version of the Merlin story that he had seen in a movie uh, and how it had a very LOA kind of a theme to it. So we were talking about that. She says she uh, just was working with her Oracle fairy card deck today and pulled the Merlin card. And, you know, so uh -huh. there's an example of it, you know, a, right. a little, little tiny synchronicity that comes out of, you know, this yeah. really challenging time that we're in simply because she took the time to get herself into a good place. We got ourselves into a good place and all of a sudden there we are. Vedantic philosophy says that there's only two signs of being enlightened. One is that you stop worrying. Mm. And two is that you experience more meaningful coincidence or yeah, that's true. synchronicity, right? Serendipity, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. Just that, just those two things. That's it. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. 
Well, speaking of serendipities and coincidences, I know one that uh, you can kind of create for yourself, and it's really easy to do. And that's to become a subscriber of LOA Today. So let me talk about that for a moment. Um, because most of you we know are subscribers, but the rest of you, which are probably about 10 to 15% of you, we want to invite you to join too, because look at what's, what happens. I mean, obviously we aren't always talking about, you know, severe crises like these because they, they don't happen very often. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we always have something going on that's really interesting. Every show is different. Every show has a different topic. It's all the same topic. It's all under the umbrella of law of attraction, but it's different. And, and that's because all of life is covered by the law of attraction. So literally there's no limit to the number of, of topics that we can talk about. And we cover them all. So that's the benefit. The other big benefit, and this is really key. We've been talking throughout this show about different strategies today, how to turn things around in the midst of crisis, in the midst of really, really difficult situations. Well, that skill helps it, it, it helps a lot when you're when you're taking on tasks, when you're, not tasks, when you're taking on activities that feel good. It, 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 that's how you develop the skill by by taking on fun things to do. And sadly, a lot of the, the entertainment that's out there is not particularly fun, but this one is. This <laughs> one's really fun. So that that's like, that's the benefit I'm pointing to. It you have a really true a, a daily dose of happy that comes from being a subscriber five days a week because we do five shows Monday through Friday that we record at 4 p.m. New York time. And, uh, you know, that's how you can get your, your five days of happiness. So become a subscriber. Most of you know how to do it, but if you don't know how to do it, we've made it simple. Go to the homepage of our website, LOAToday.net. At the top of the page, you'll find instructions on how to do it. Usually for most people, one or two clicks will do it. Also check us out on YouTube because that's where we live stream to as we're recording. You can actually see what Cindy looks like. You can see what Dan looks like. You can see what Linda looks like and Louie and everybody else. See what I look like. Um, and, Subscribe there and click the bell so you can get notified whenever uh, we are on there as well. So become a subscriber and, you know, add this to your program. Just like we're going to add David Bernie. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look up the David Bernie website and add that to my program, you know, my daily routine, because we need these. These are where we get the fuel from. This, these are where we get the things that help yeah. us to take that next step. That next step is so important. So any last thoughts that you want to leave people with while we're kind of drawing this to a close here? I mean, it's it's kind of hard to pull a last thought out of something that's a, a tough topic. But on the other hand, we've spent a whole hour coming up with a whole bunch of things that, you know, kind of pivot away from that tough topic. So I, I don't doubt we can do it again. Well, and I I don't necessarily think we're pivoting away from the tough topic. I think we're meeting it head on and just addressing it. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. um, I and I think that the thought that comes to me is that life has an ebb and flow, right? Like, mm. even talking about illnesses, like, we get ready for flu season, right? Because a certain time of year, we expect things to be worse. Or we have vacation season because the weather's going to be better. And mm. we're all going to go wherever we're going to go. So, I mean, life never stops moving and shifting and changing. There is an ebb and a flow. This, too, will pass. Like, it's going to get better. And I get the sense that uh, what comes out of this whole situation is going to be a lot of really good things. I agree. Boy, that's a great point. I wish we'd made that a lot more during the show rather than in the last two minutes, but I totally agree. I totally buy into that. There is going to be information and stories and stuff that comes out of this that we, many people can't even begin to fathom right now, yeah. but it's just going to completely reshape the viewpoints of millions of people just by mm. having this experience. And because it's a global thing, uh, that's the part of it that for me, I feel like, oh, my goodness, what an opportunity this is for us to recognize how connected we all are. Yes. Right? Sure. And that some of the things that we've watched in our world, in our society that seem like injustices, that don't seem like they're ever going to get better, I think that this is part of the process. It is part of the process. Yeah. And it's a good one. I mean, it's maybe tough to go through, but in the end, it's a good one. It's a very good one. And actually, I suppose everything we run into in life and that we experience in life is is good. Um, at least I like to think that it is because that's part of how I grow. And yeah. I encourage other people to kind of take on that same viewpoint. But however, whatever your viewpoint is, I, I think we can all agree good things come out of everything in one yeah. way or another. Every, that's why I have the mantra that everything is, every moment is perfect. It doesn't mean every moment feels good. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You didn't say that. No. <laughs> so, okay. Well, good stuff. Well, thank you very much, Cindy. As usual, your comments and insights were right on. 
And well, uh, I love being here. We appreciate so much. Thanks also to our live streamers and especially to our podcast listeners as well. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Bye.